Today in our 2017 Ford F-150, we're going to be installing Roadmaster's Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit, part number RM-154. This wiring kit is going to give you all of your necessary signals at the back of your vehicle, which includes your left turn, right turn, tail lamps, and brake lamps, so you'll be DOT compliant in all states. So what this means when you're hooked up and going down the road, when you hit a turn signal in your RV, that same turn signal applies on your vehicle, and likewise for all the other signals. These diodes allow your RV signals to be transferred to your taillights without interfering with the factory signals. And all your factory signals are still hooked up, everything's separate, so everything works properly when you're driving your vehicle or when you're hooked up to your RV. We'll begin our installation at the back of our truck by removing both driver's and passenger side taillights. There'll be two bolts on the inside we'll remove with an 8mm socket. Then you can remove your taillight by just pulling rearward. If you're having some difficulties getting it released, you can use a plastic trim panel tool to help pry it out. Once it's disconnected, disconnect the large harness going to your taillights. You repeat the same process on the other side. Now if you want to make sure that your truck is the same as our customer's truck here, you can double check your wires along with us. We've already verified which ones they are. Our blue and silver wire is going to be our taillights. And our gray with brown stripe wire is going to be our turn and brake signal. You can verify that because it's going on and off with our turn signal. And now on our passenger side, blue and silver wire is our tail lights for our brake and turn signal. And it looks like it's going to be our purple with orange stripe. Strip back the sheathing to expose your wires so we can tap into them with our diodes. We'll then take the long four pole harness provided in our kit and we're going to cut off the four pole ends so we can splice into our wiring. Strip back some of the green wire as that's going to go over to our passenger side. We'll then take the yellow, white and brown and run those from underneath up here to our taillight wiring. If you look down, you can see the opening in the hole. So you can just run it up right through there. I'll cut the wire for your taillights and the wire for your brake and turn signal. Now strip back each ends of the wires you just cut and all three of the wires that you ran up. Take off two of the blue crimp terminals from your diodes. We'll be crimping those onto each end of each wire that you just stripped back. Then crimp on a blue terminal onto the yellow wire that you ran up. Now you will need to run a signal wire from your tail light on this side over to the diode on the other side, on the passenger side. Due to the limiting amount of wire that we have, we're going to use part of our extra white wire to do so. Now if you want, you can get some extra brown wire to keep everything color coded. But if not, and you're following along, twist your white wire and your brown wires together and you'll crimp those to the yellow terminal on your diode. We can now connect our diodes on our driver's side. We'll connect the blue and silver wire to the out located on the diode. This is the connector side of the blue and silver. The vehicle side will plug in to one of the ends. The other end on our blue and silver wire, since this is our tail lights, is going to go to the brown and white yellow connector that we crimped. We'll then take our other diode, connect the out to the green and blue wire on our connector side. The green and blue on the vehicle side will go on one of the ends and the yellow wire will go on the other end. You can then peel back the plastic adhesive and stick these up inside the body or stick them together wherever you feel comfortable will be out of the way and not clinking around. Now since we're being efficient with the wire provided in our kit, we're going to see how much white wire we need to get that tail light signal over to this side. So once you've kind of eyeballed it there, held it up, go ahead and separate the white wire from the rest of your wires and then you'll cut it after you've separated it. That way you can pull it free. We're pulling it free 
in the direction towards our driver's side taillight. We'll now run the white wire from our driver's side taillight and our green wire over to our passenger side. Now, if you did opt for some additional wire to keep things color coded, this would be a brown wire instead of a white wire. We ran our wire across following the factory wiring, zip tying into it along the way, and ran it up the hole to our passenger side taillight. We'll now do just like we did on our driver's side. We'll strip back the wiring, exposing the circuits that we're gonna tap into. On your passenger side, you're gonna cut each wire. Now strip back each end of each wire. Now crimp on blue terminals onto each end of each wire that you just stripped back. We'll connect the connector end of the blue and silver wire to the out labeled on our diode. The other end of the blue and silver going to our vehicle will connect to the in. And the white wire that we ran across will connect to the other in. Now we'll connect the out to the connector side of the blue and orange. Connect the vehicle end of the blue and orange to the in. And we'll connect our green wire that we ran across to the other end. Stick those in any open spot or stick them together. You can now reinstall your taillights on both sides. We'll now need to run the wire to the front of the vehicle and we'll take our white wire that we had cut earlier that's going to the front and hook this to ground. We began running our wire towards the front. We went right alongside the frame rail following our factory wiring and zip tying it whenever possible. There were some little clips here that you could actually clip the wire into to help guide it. And right here at our gas tank, we've got that white wire that we had cut earlier we're gonna to need to run this to ground. So we're just gonna use a self-tapping screw to run it right into this beam right here underneath our truck bed. Strip back the white wire. Then crimp on the small blue ring terminal that comes with your kit. Then we'll use an eight millimeter socket to thread in a self-tapping screw into that beam. Now the kit doesn't come with a self-tapping screw, but you can pick one up here at eTrailer.com. Then we continued running our wire down our frame rail. Again, following that factory wiring, staying away from any moving objects, such as your steering and suspension components, and any excessively hot objects, such as your exhaust. When we got to the gas tank here, we did have to go around the frame rail, just to get it to go up here. And we just stayed on top following the wire here where it does go over the frame rail on our factory wiring. So we just followed that up. We now need to get our wiring from underneath up into our engine compartment and then routed to the front of the vehicle. We're gonna do that using a piece of airline tubing. Running it down to where our wiring was. And we can use this to pull it back up. This is much easier than trying to run the wire from down up. We'll then take our wiring and connect it to the air hose using some electrical tape. We can then pull our wiring up using that airline tubing. You do want to go check underneath to make sure that it did pull all the way up and you didn't get caught up on anything. We are going to be running the wire back down now. We ran it up to the engine compartment because several braking systems for your flat toe setup will need to tap into these wiring. So now we've got a location to make that connection if we need it. And we just dropped it right back down in front of the wheel next to the frame rail. We'll zip tie it to our factory wiring located in that area to keep it out of the way. We dropped our wiring down on front of our wheel on the frame rail here, followed it forward, came across, and we went up right into our grill area here so we can mount it at the front. We'll now remove our license plate bracket. On each side of the bracket, you'll have four tabs to release it from the beams. You'll pull outwards on those tabs, 
and you'll have to push inwards on the others. Once you've released the four tabs on each of the beams, the bracket will just pop right off. We're going to be connect our wiring to a six pole connector so we can connect it to our RV. We'll need to mount a bracket for our six pole connector. You can pick up a six pole connector here at eTrailer.com with part number RM-910030-7. And we're using the bracket that came with our base plate kit. We'll make sure that our self-tapping screws go into the metal bracing here. So you do want to come a little bit further forward. Now use a self-tapping screw to mount your bracket. Self-tapping screws don't come with the kit, so you will need to pick some up here at eTrailer.com. We've got our wire run up, but we can't just run it through the grill because of the active shutter system. So we're gonna use a step bit. We're just gonna drill a small hole in the plastic straight down so we can feed it up in front of the moving components. Before you can get the wiring up to the hole we just drilled, you're gonna to have to cut off the four pole connector as we're not gonna be using it. And this will make it smaller, allowing it to fit through that hole. We're gonna go ahead and trim our wire to just so we have a little bit so we can pull our connector out, but not to where we have too much excess. Strip back each wire. Before you make your connections, make sure you slide the rubber boot on your wiring, and we'll hook it to our connector. The white wire is our ground wire, so we'll hook that to the pin labeled GD. Unscrew with a small Phillips screwdriver, poke the wire in, and then tighten it back down. We'll then hook up our brown wire, which is our tail light wires. It's going to be the one labeled TM. Then our yellow wire is our left turn signal. We'll hook that up to the one labeled LT. And lastly, our green wire is our right turn signal. We'll hook that up to the one labeled RT. Now, before you finish up, you're going to want to put some dielectric grease on each of your pins. That'll help keep out any moisture and corrosion. It also doesn't hurt if you want that extra layer of security to put some silicone in the back end here. You can then connect your six pole connector to your bracket using some hardware that can be locally sourced from any hardware store. Now that we're hooked up to our RV, we can check out all of our circuits. As you can see, we've got our tail lights, left turn, right turn, and brake lights. Now, if you're going to use a braking system when flat towing your F-150, you want to verify if you need a brake light relay. Because when you hit the brakes in your RV, that braking system is going to apply the brakes in the vehicle. And when it does, it may override your turn signal, just like we did there. If the brake signal does override your turn signal, you won't be in compliance with state laws. So you'll need to install a brake light relay to disable that overriding brake signal. And so as you can see now with our brake light relay installed and our turn signal on, when I hit the brake, it's not overridden and everything works properly. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit on our 2017 Ford F-150.